Hello, I'm Jason Howland, and welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. Imagine you or a loved one is faced with a serious or life-threatening illness. You want to relieve the pain and improve your quality of life, in some cases in the small amount of time that is left. While traditional clinical medicine can't cure you of your illness, Palliative medicine can help you live your life better in the face of that illness. Our guests today on Speaking of Health are Dr. Corey Ingram, Palliative Care Medical Director from Mayo Clinic Health System and also Assistant Professor of Palliative Medicine at Mayo Clinic, and also here to share her own personal story of a family member's experience with palliative care is Linda Sandberg from Sherburn. Thanks for joining us both on Speaking of Health. Thank, Thank you, you, Jason. Well, uh, Dr. Ingram, first off, could you start by uh, explaining what palliative care is? Because uh, a lot of people probably don't know what it is. That's exactly right, Jason. Thank you for asking, and thanks for having this segment on palliative care. Um, I think your intro actually stated it quite well about if a loved one had a serious illness. and. In palliative care, we are a team of people who focuses on one thing, and that is helping a patient and their family live well in the face of serious illness. We tend to four main areas of their life, their physical suffering, social suffering, emotional suffering, and spiritual suffering. And as a team, we try and help them live as well as they can in the face of serious illness. You know, uh, a lot of people have heard of hospice, I'm sure, and, mm -hmm. but not, a lot haven't heard of palliative care. Yeah. What is the difference between the two? Hospice care was developed in the, in the 1980s in this country um, to deliver palliative care to dying patients. Palliative medicine has really risen to the forefront in the last years as people are living with serious illnesses for a lot longer periods of time. And palliative medicine is the delivering deliverance of palliative care for people who are living with a serious illness, not necessarily dying from it. And so we provide very similar services to hospice, but we take care of patients who are recently diagnosed throughout the illness course. Some people are actually get better, and we, so, we sometimes we care for people even as they are dying. But a lot of people also, at some point in time, transitioned to receiving palliative care through hospice in the last few weeks of life as well. Well, Linda, uh, if you could, please share a little bit of uh, the story of your sister and the experience uh, that uh, she and your family had with palliative care program at Mayo Clinic Health System. Um, my sister, Vicki Rosenberg, suffered from cancer, ovarian cancer, for about seven years. I'd never heard of palliative care. And in August uh, this last year, uh, my sister was hospitalized in Mankato um, with a bowel obstruction and actually a bursting of the bowel and was very, very ill. And while we were there, we were contacted by the palliative care team and asked if they would um, like us to come and visit with them. And Vicki was so sick, she could hardly even respond. So she asked if I would sit in with her. I had no idea what palliative care was. So it was very interesting to me, and I was just amazed by these people. They um, come in as a team. They're extremely caring, loving, and um, the four points that he talked about that they try to cover, they're wonderful. Vicki had been suffering from some conditions, and they immediately, because of their vast experience with people going through those types of situations, said, we need to do this, 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 and this for you and that aided her tremendously. It took her out of a lot of pain. A lot of the symptoms which would, were causing her a lot of problems were remedied within one or two days. And this was right before my sister's son was getting married, a week before he was getting married. And they had said all along, we will get you to that wedding. And I would never have dreamed they could have accomplished that goal. And they did. And she looked gorgeous. And it was in large part thanks to the love and care and support that they gave mm -hmm. her. And I understand that uh, Vicki was very passionate about palliative care. Uh, even before she was diagnosed with cancer, she was well aware what palliative care was and, and what it does for people, right? Yes, she was. I did not know that. Uh, she worked at the foundation for the Medelia Hospital, uh, the director, and as part of that, she was looking for a grant to get palliative care into the Medelia area and actually worked with someone from Mankato to get the grant that got this wonderful program into the area. So when it ended up that she had 
was using their services, she was just thrilled. And that's why when I was asked if I would come and speak on this, it's like, yes, because this was something that my sister was very passionate about. And I know she's up in heaven going, yes, yes, <laughs> send, get it down to Fairmont, get it everywhere else you can, because it is such a wonderful program. Thank you. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, the palliative care team helping her with her symptoms, but uh, I would imagine there was many other things that the, the team helped with as well, right? Yes. I mean, they were there for Vicki medically, like he said, emotionally, spiritually, which was wonderful. But they also um, met with the family, first with my mom and dad and Vicki and I, and I was amazed how intuitive they were to what my parents were going through, what Vicki was going through, what we were going through. And my dad had really struggled with Vicki's situation, and it really helped him. When he came out of that meeting, he says, wow, they're wonderful. And then um, later on, they met with the whole family, and we have a pretty good-sized family with Vicki's sons and you know the rest of us. And rather than having us all drive up to Mankato, they said, you know what, we'll come down to Sherburn. So they took their time and came down and met with us in Sherburn. And they're so patient, you never felt like, okay, they were looking at their watches, I need to get going. They would give us whatever time was needed and explain things so well. And they did a great job with a topic that's very difficult. Her sons were very nervous about meeting with them and discussing mm -hmm. this kind of taboo subject. And it really helped Vicki too, because it's some it's a kind of meeting that she'd wanted to have with her boys and her family, and they helped have that discussion and make it easier for all of us. Yet nobody knows how to deal with, you know, uh, a serious or life-threatening illness. How do you deal with that? And having experts uh, there to help you and, and guide you along, I would, I would imagine would be very, very helpful, right? Yeah, you just can't explain how much support that is to have them understand, like I said, what you're going through, provide resources, you know, say, this is probably what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, how'd they know that? And and I didn't want to say that in front of Vicky, or Vicky didn't want to say some things in front of us. But because of the support that they had, Vicky could say some things that she wanted to say. Yeah, it was just great for her, like like you said, because she wanted to have the conversations. They're difficult. She didn't know how to do it, and yeah. with your guys's help, it was great. Well, Dr. Ingram, can you talk a little bit more about uh, your team, what it consists of, and, and some of the things that you provide for patients and their families like Vicki's? Sure. So I'm, I'm really glad, uh, you know, I think um, this really is, allows us to showcase what we do. And um, we have on our team a nurse, nurse practitioner, social worker, chaplain. We also have volunteers. We would love to have healing arts practitioners in the future as well, doing uh, creative um, uh, art therapy, uh, writing therapy, music therapy. Um, and I think w if you can envision being seriously ill, if you can envision being in the hospital, the hospital has barely been unable to control three main things that go on when you're hospitalized. Boredom, isolation, loneliness. And so we also have a team of volunteers who come and help people who are in our hospital or at home or wherever they may be to lighten the load on their family as well as help that person in the midst of what they're dealing with. Uh, recently we had a young lady who wanted to uh, create a, she wanted to do some handwork. Turned out she wanted to do latch hook rug. Volunteers went and got it. They brought it in the hospital. They made her hospitalization better in the face of serious illness. So our team is, is broad and, and uh, trying to be all encompassing. Well, you know, I've heard you refer to palliative care as a cloak, and mm -hmm. that's actually what palliative means, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the direct translation. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if, we're really, if, if we really look carefully at people who are seriously ill and their families, I think one word that comes to mind for all of them is fragile. The situation is fragile and very tender for all of them. And what they need is somebody to cloak, so, to, to really embrace them as a whole, Helping, helping them through the situations they're in, from home to hospital to, you know, Rochester and back, really helping guide them through our system and help them live well in the face of serious illness. 
And at this point, the palliative care team for Mayo Clinic Health Systems region in southwest Minnesota is based out of Mankato, but the goal is to spread the program to other sites, including in Fairmont and some of the other locations, right? That's exactly right. We're looking at, at models of care so that we can have palliative care available to absolutely every patient within the Mayo Clinic Health System. So anywhere in, in this region of the Mayo Clinic Health System, as well as our Wisconsin sites and the area around Rochester, palliative medicine is clearly an initiative in which we feel so strongly about that we want every patient who is within a uh, distance of a Mayo Clinic Health System site to receive palliative care services. And in Fairmont already, there's been a, a, a good start to get that program going, right? That's exactly right. The Cole family, as you may have seen, um, opened their hearts. I called it a gift truly of compassion. They both have lived through a spouse dying, being seriously ill, being in Rochester, being in their local community, and they've experienced how some of the things we've talked about, the loneliness, the boredom, just the sheer uh, un unawareness of how sick their loved one was and then the end of their loved one's life. And they recognize the need for palliative care, helping people who are living with these serious illnesses transition throughout the healthcare system and be well cared for at the same time. So Dr. Engram, tell me a little bit more about uh, the patients that your team takes care of in palliative care. Um, I'd be glad to. I think Vicki was a prime example, a, a young mother, wife with an advanced cancer. Um, we take care of people of all ages. You know, we take care of, um, this year we've taken care of people in their 20s. Certainly there's specialized palliative care for children as well. We don't see a great deal of those children in this area of the state. They're usually taken care of in the cities. So we, we do take care of people of all ages, young and old. And people we take care of, they're living with a serious illness that affects their daily life. You know, oftentimes it's hard to, for them to can fulfill their regular daily activities. It's hard for them to work. We, we try and help them get back to work. Um, it's hard for them, you know, just to complete the things that most of us, frankly, take for granted prior to that day in which we have a serious illness. Some people might experience as well that, and I actually tell people this, I say, you know, we're kind of like a bad rash. We keep coming back. <laughs> Once you got us, you're stuck with us. Mm -hmm. My social worker has said, well, you know, you might want to say we're like a tattoo. It sounds better. <laughs> but I think that's the experience of some patients and families because once you are caring for somebody that seriously ill, the connection, it, it's just natural. It's, it stays. It's, it's mm -hmm. durable. And I, I think your family experienced the same thing. Even when Vicki officially was in hospice care, we, we were in Mankato, but we weren't far away. Definitely, most definitely. Um, while she was technically under the palliative care umbrella alone, we would have issues. My sister was very ill, like I said, and I'd call their team and say, we need to get her this doctor and we can't get her in or we need this medication. Okay, we'll take care of it, and they did. I can't even think of all the things that they help us take care of. Once she transitioned into hospice, they didn't drop us. They were still there, and there were times that because of all the different medical professionals involved, we had some concerns about her treatment and the way they had treated her was so wonderful. So I called the team, hey, can you help with this? Yep, and they did, no matter when they were there helping us. Um, my, Vicky, my sister passed away in October and I just got a call from Ellen from your team a couple weeks ago. So the caring and, and support doesn't stop. Yeah, I think that's an important piece to mention. You know, if you think about people who are cared for with hospice care, only about 30% of people that die, die with hospice care. We take care of people who are dying in palliative care as well, and we, we also provide bereavement services going forward. So for all those people that never provided professional bereavement services before, they're now providing them through palliative care as well, in addition to hospice care. So people that never got into hospice for whatever reason, are now also getting bereavement services through palliative care as well. I can only imagine uh, for the family that's got to be so reassuring to have uh, that team behind you through this whole journey. Oh, definitely. I, my sister, my other sister and I really cared for my sister that died quite a bit in those last few months and we were just 
so thankful that we had them for a resource and continue to have them for a resource. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I'd like to thank our guests today, Dr. Corey Ingram and Linda Sandberg, for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Thank you. And have a great day, everyone, and be healthy. <laughs>